It's time to grade the 2024 Boston Red Sox. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Red Seat Radio. My name is Corbin, and the Boston Red Sox season is just two games away from being over, so I figured now would be the perfect time to grade out how everybody did on the 2024 Sox. This right here is a tier list of every single player that appeared in a Red Sox uniform, plus management, as well as the front office and the ownership of this team, and we're going to grade every single one of them in today's video. The categories are pretty self-explanatory. I don't want to waste too much time in this intro thank you so much for clicking on this one let's get into it okay so hopping right into it here we're going to start with say don rafaela and say don was pretty good this season but I, he fell off towards the end so i'm going to put him in the average category i think the swing and miss problems were just too big at the end of the day for him to get into the good or very good category we're going to wait for alex core towards the end chase anderson he wasn't very good right dfa halfway through the year i think this one's pretty self-explanatory bailey horn i'm going to put him in the same category i don't think he was as bad overall as chase anderson but he certainly wasn't very good either bay I'm going to put Bayo in the average category as well. I think towards the end of the season, he was in the good category to very good category. However, we're basing this off of the full season, so I can't put him into that good or very good category. Bernardino, I'm going to go not good. I think, again, you base it on the whole year and not just the best parts of the year. He was wildly inconsistent, ended up being demoted, ended up getting hurt. I just don't think there's enough here to put him into anything better. Cam Boozer, I'm going to put him in average, too. I, he was better overall than Bernardino this season, I think, more consistent. There were times where he certainly wasn't good, but I think overall the consistency was a bit more there than Bernardino. That one might be a hot take. Isaiah Campbell, he was terrible. He wasn't very good with the Red Sox. Tristan Casas, I'm going to put Casas in the average as well. I almost put him in the injured, didn't really do anything, but he got a big enough sample size towards the end of the year there, and I think a lot of the reason he's in the average is simply because he just was trying to get back from an injury, so not totally totally his fault he's in the average Chris Martin Chris Martin was good Chris Martin has been good this year the only reason he's not very good is because he spent three separate times on the IL and he did have points this season where he wasn't fully himself Chris Murphy injured did nothing Garrett Cooper Garrett Cooper was terrible in his time with the Red Sox it wasn't very long but it wasn't very good Cooper Criswell Cooper Criswell was good Cooper Criswell was much better than I think everyone expected him to be, especially coming into the season. He, he served a pretty big role on this Red Sox team. Bobby Dahlbeck. Yeah, Bobby Dahlbeck was terrible. Bobby, I love Bobby. He wasn't very good this season. David Hamilton. Average or good is kind of where I'm stuck here with David Hamilton. I'm going to put David Hamilton in the average category. I think the bat at times was really impressive. I think he did play an important role in the Red Sox lineup, but there were times where he was just wildly inconsistent at the plate on the field. There just wasn't enough consistency, in my opinion, to put him into the very good or good category. Rafael Devers, I almost want to put him in elite because he battled through a shoulder injury for so long, but he did have that terrible September. I'm going to put him in very good. He could have been elite, but again, we're judging it based off of statistics for the whole year. Again, another one like Casas, where it really isn't totally his fault he was injured, but again, if we're basing it strictly off of statistics, it wasn't an elite year for Rafael Devers. Dom Smith, I'll put Dom Smith in average. I'll give Dom Smith the the average I mean technically the statistics weren't crazy but they were pretty close to league average and he did provide the Red Sox with a bit of a spark at some point this season so I'll give that to him even though he's not on the team Duran easy elite right historic season incredible season he did everything he could at least on the field to be the best player he could be so we're gonna give Duran obviously the elite Valdez uh you know what Valdez was bad I was gonna put him in the not good Valdez was bad right he simply couldn't get it together at the plate he had some big moments I guess and there were some fun moments defensively but he wasn't a good defender and he really hasn't been very good at the plate Richard Fitz Richard Fitz was good I would put him in the very good category but I don't think the sample size is large enough to try truly base totally what he could be but his first showing in the major leagues was absolutely fantastic Luis Garcia terrible right he was very bad then he got injured now he's back and he looks a little bit better but man that sample size overall not very good Mickey Gasper um I'll put Mickey in the not good category he was I mean at the plate he hasn't been good at all out on the field he's been pretty solid I again I almost put him in the too small sample size here but I think there's a large enough sample size to do something with him I just don't think it was fantastic Lucas Giolito yeah I mean didn't do anything this season. Romy Gonzalez. Romy Gonzalez was good, man. I almost want to put him in very good, to be honest with you. <sighs> 
I'm going to put him in the good category. There were times where he didn't exactly do super well, but man, he's been really, really solid for this team. And in the role that he's in, he's been really solid. I'm going to put Von Grissom in the not good category. I think he's been better since he's been back, but his first 23 games with the Sox were really terrible in terms of statistics. Again, you know, there are excuses that can be made for Grissom, and they're ex very valid excuses. And again, he's looked better since he's come back. But if we're looking at the overall sample size, it's been below average. Luis Guerrero, I'm going to put him in the good category. Again, another guy that you could possibly do too small sample size, but he's been in enough games now, in my opinion, where you could kind of say, yeah, that guy's been pretty good. He's been very good, actually. I almost want to put him in the very good category, but again, not a big enough sample size. Tyler Heineman, I got cooked last time for not putting him in too small sample size, so we're just going to put him in too small sample size. He had, what, three or four games with the Red Sox this year. Tanner Houck, obviously, very clearly, very good. He was the best pitch the Red Sox have. I almost want to put him in elite for being really, really really good this year. He was a top 10 ERA in in the AL. He was fantastic on the mound this season, emerged as a legitimate frontline starting pitcher, a legitimate guy that the Red Sox can sort of hang their hat on to be in this rotation next year. Jamie Westbrook, Jamie Westbrook got enough sample size. I think Jamie Westbrook deserves to be on this ranking. It's not very high. He just simply is not a major league player on a daily basis. Danny Jansen, Danny Jansen's been bad. He's been solid defensively, but at the plate, he got even worse than he was on the Blue Jays. It just, that trade did not work out for the Red Sox. Joe Jakes, Joe Jakes was terrible. He's no longer with the team. I think he's in Colorado at this point. I honestly can't remember where he's at right now. Joelli was bad. I think overall, there were some good moments when he came back up after his injury and after he spent some time in AAA, but if you look at the sample size overall, just not very good. Brad Keller, pretty much the same thing. Zach Kelly, I'm going to put Zach Kelly in the... Uh, do I put him in the average? I think statistically he's average. I think if you look at the statistics overall, he's average. If you take a look at the season as a whole, again, it's not how it ended. It's how the whole season went. Zach Kelly was an average pitcher for the Boston Red Sox. Kenley Jansen. Kenley was good this year. I think Kenley was a really solid closer for the Red Sox. There were times this season where he fell off. There were times this season where he wasn't the elite closer that you'd expect him to be, but overall, it was still a really good season. He did quit on the team a little bit early. He left the team three games left. I don't love that. There were times where the off-field stuff, people didn't really agree with, but I will say on the field, he was a pretty solid player. Cutter Crawford, absolutely. I don't think he's in the same category as Tanner Houck, but he's pretty dang close at this point. I think he had that rough stretch in the middle of the season, but again, you look at the season, and overall and what you'd expect from Cutter Crawford and he was a really solid sort of mid to late half of the rotation type player and it was really good for this Red Sox team. Reese McGuire yeah Reese McGuire he's not in the terrible category he wasn't very good he's now in AAA just simply did not work out super well. James Paxson too small sample size right he got what two starts for the Red Sox and then got injured just didn't work out. Zach Penrod I'll put Zach Penrod in the, is he as good as Luis Guerrero? I'll put him in the average category. You could put him in the too small sample size category, but at the same time, I think there's been enough where you could kind of base what his 2024 with the Red Sox look like. It's overall been solid. Lately, it hasn't been as good. I'm going to put him in average. Nick Pavetta. Nick Pavetta is a tough one because he could go in good. He could go in average. I'm going to put Nick Pavetta in the I'm going to put Nick Pavetta in the good category. I think there were times this year he was consistently inconsistent. He's been consistently inconsistent his entire Red Sox career, but there were some really good moments for Nick Pavetta and this latest stretch really in my opinion pushes him above average and into that good category. That one could be pretty debatable. I'm sure I'll get some comments on that one. Rob Ref Snyder, he's been good. I think against left-handed pitching, he continued to do exactly what he'd been doing. He served a role as a leader in this clubhouse. I think he could have been better towards the end of the season, but everyone could have been better towards the end of the season. We'll put him in the good category. Pablo Reyes was not good with the Red Sox. Terrible. Rich Hill. Not good with the Red Sox. Terrible. Chase Shugard. I'm going to put Chase in the average category. I, I Again, this one could go too small sample size, but he's been solid since he's been up here. Not really much else to say. I'm going to put Lucas Sims just one step above Luis Garcia. I, I think that one could be debatable. I think it's debatable whether or not he's in terrible. His stuff really hasn't been good with the Red Sox. Justin Slayton. Slayton's been... I'm going to put Slayton in average. I think with the injury that you include, I think with the statistics since he's come back from the injury included, looking at the season as a whole he's been a pretty average reliever there's a ton of potential there don't get me wrong and I'm excited to see what he can be in the 2025 season but this season there have been some up and down moments for sure 
Nick Sogard. I'm going to put Nick Sogard in good. I think that's going to be another one that gets debated in the comments. But at this point, with what you're expecting from Nick Sogard, he's played solid defense basically everywhere he's been. He's been making a lot of contact. There hasn't been a ton of true impact contact, but it's been on base percentage. has been solid. Doubles all over the place. I think he's been a good player since he's been up here. Trevor Story, I think you get a big enough sample size, and he's been good since he's come back to the Red Sox. I think, again, I'm going to put him in that good category. Since coming back, he's hitting around 260. It's not a huge uh, slugging percentage, but it's been a bunch of contact that we didn't see from Trevor Story at the beginning of the year, and the defense really helps him out there. Tyler O'Neill. I almost want to put him in the very good category, but he went through so many slumps that it's so hard to put him into that very good category. And so I think we're going to have to go with Tyler O'Neill in the good category. Uesawa, do I put Uesawa in terrible? I'll put him in too small sample size. What did he get? Three games with the Red Sox. Going to be tough to average that out. Greg Weiser was an average reliever. He was statistically, he was above average reliever, but there was just too much inconsistency in his game this year to put him in the good or very good category. But if you take a look at the stats, he ended up finishing out this season with some really good statistics. Garrett Whitlock injured, didn't really do anything. Willier Brayu, I'm going to put Willier in the very good category. I know he's been slumping recently, but that bat played a big role in this team's success or lack thereof, I guess you could say, in this season. And plus, he's in, he's on track to win a gold glove in right field. So hard to really argue with that one. Josh Rudkowski has not been good. I don't think he's been bad or terrible, but really not great on the mound. Trey Winginter, yeah, too small a sample size. Connor Wong's an interesting one. I don't really know where to put Connor Wong. I think I put Connor Wong in the average category, right? The bat played for most of the season, and that's kind of why I'm not putting him in the not good or bad category, but the defense hasn't been good all year, and he's been slumping hard at the plate in the second half, so it's almost like a tale of two cities here for Connor Wong, where in the first half, he was very good. In the second half, he was kind of terrible, so it kind of averages out to an average player. Massa, I'm going to put Massa in the good category. I know people don't love that idea, but man, he has been solid this year at the plate when he's been healthy. Zach Short, again, too small sample size. I just, you got what, five games with the Red Sox? And those are the players of this tier list. So let me know how I did in the comments down below. And let's get into the front office management and the overall grading of this team. Okay, so when we're looking at the front, let's start with the management of this team. I think a lot of people are going to debate this because of the collapse in the second half, but I think if you look at all the factors surrounding this team and the fact that Alex Cora had really no depth to work with on the Red Sox and was still able to maintain the record that they were able to maintain, I mean, if you look at the beginning of the year, they were expected to be a below 77 win team, and they've already surpassed that with two games left. It's hard to say that there was below average management on this team. I think without Alex Cora, you are absolutely below 77 wins. If we're talking about management in total and coaching staff in total, there were absolutely some flaws with the Red Sox. I'm not saying he was a perfect manager or anything, but I absolutely do think that he is in the good category. And I think that's kind of tough to debate considering how little expectations were on the Red Sox this season, what he was able to do at points with this team. Craig Breslow's first season with the Red Sox, and this is a tough one because there are two ways to judge this season. You could judge it on theoretical approach, or you can judge it on execution, right? I think the theoretical approach for Craig Breslow, what he did this offseason, what he did at the deadline theoretically, especially with the parameters that were set for him by ownership, which we'll get to in a second, I think was excellent. The problem was the execution didn't work out well, right? You head out of the deadline, you get the pieces you wanted to get, just wasn't to the level you were expecting expecting to get them at, and then they all got hurt. I think some of the trades that Craig Breslow made specifically for the 2024 season haven't worked out in totality, but you did get guys like Fitz and O'Neill on this team, and I think those were big positives for the Red Sox. I don't know where to put Craig Breslow. I guess I'll put him in average. I think a lot of people will say it's not good to ver to bad, but again, I'm judging it based on theoretical approach and execution, not just simply execution, and I think that's where he ends up. As we always do, until th something changes, ownership gets a terrible right. I think the big problem with this Red Sox team this season is that they did not make the investments or weren't allowed to make the investments that they should have made for a team that has a core like this one. I really hope at some point this grading changes it's been what three years in a row now that we've put John Henry in the terrible category 
please, at some point, John, just do something to break yourself out of that sl- uh, slump. And finally, the Red Sox as a whole, considering the fact that they are 500 at the time of this recording, projected to finish 500 on the season, how do you not put them in average, right? They had a fantastic first half, a really bad second half. It averages out to a dead even team. What else are you supposed to do, right? And I think looking overall at the Red Sox this season, this kind of tells you exactly everything you need to know. One elite player, a couple of very good players, a whole lot of good to average, and the rest well below, right? I think that's exactly what we saw from the Red Sox this season. I'm sure you guys are going to want to debate where I placed guys in the comments down below. So let me know, what did I get right? What did I get wrong? And how would you grade the 2024 Red Sox? Let me know all your thoughts in the comment section down below. As always, if you made it to the end of this video, do me a favor. Make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you're new here, we talk Red Sox content almost every single day. Also, make sure you guys have hit the like button on this video as well. Just simply helps out a ton. Best way to let me know you're enjoying the content. Don't forget, you can always listen instead of watch these episodes. All you got to do is head over to your favorite podcasting app and look up Red Seat Radio. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one, and I will see you in the Red Seats.